Hey everyone, I've got some great tips to share with you today for ways to get the most out of your re-inker inks. Plus, I'm also going to be stamping on some very textured surfaces as well. So let me show you how I do it. I'm working my junk journal today and to start off, all I want is a layer of gesso. This pot of gesso is quite old, so it's become quite thick, but it makes it really easy for getting a great texture. So what I'm going to do to make a really quick and simple texture is just to press some other pages in another junk journal into this gesso surface and then peel them apart. And it will leave me with two double pages of great gesso texture. Now normally I would just let this dry in its own time, but today I'm really pushed for time, so I'm going to out with the heat tool and give this a little bit of a helping hand to dry. So the re that I thought I would play with today are the Tim Holtz Distress Inks from Ranger. Now if you're a crafter or a stamper then you probably know these really well. If you're not quite sure what I'm talking about then these are the, the inks that you use to refresh an ink pad for using with rubber stamping techniques. And these particular ones, they come in quite a handy little glass bottle that has its own little eyedropper. Now these inks tend to be a little bit gloopier than other inks would be because they are used for refreshing and refilling ink pads. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're using them. Undiluted, they tend to have this kind of glossy sheen to them and take rather a long time to dry. But if you dilute them down with water, and as they are water-based as well, then you can kind of use them like a watercolouring medium. So I'm going to use them first off to colour my background on this textured gesso. And again, because I'm in quite a bit of a rush doing this art journal page, I will speed things along a little bit by using the heat tool. But that's actually worked out quite well because I can use the heat tool to push that watered down ink into rivets of extra texture and colour along the surface. You can see I can be, I'm being kind of haphazard about how I add this. I am literally just dropping the ink onto the page, spraying it with water, and then moving it around with my finger, or lifting up the page to move it around, or using the heat tool to move it around. But I don't want my page to get too saturated with water, so that's why I'm drying off in between layers. These particular inks will still react to water put on top, so even when they're dry, you will still get them reacting one layer to another layer. And you can see that here where I've added that blue ink on top of that dry yellow area but you're getting sort of a green mix coming through which is absolutely fine because I specifically chose colours that I knew would mix well together and I tested them out beforehand just to be sure. But wait a minute, whilst I colour crush, I absolutely adore this colour. This is Peacock Feathers and is probably my utmost favourite colour out of this whole range. I mean look at it, it's beautiful. Okay, I have a bit of a thing for teal. Teal is like my top favourite colour ever. Do you have a favourite colour? What's your favourite colour? Do share, because I'd love to know. And also, what colours do you tend to use in your artwork? And are they the same as your favourite colour? Because I try to use lots of different colours. I try not to stay in one colour set and just mix and match, experiment. What do you do? Right, okay, I need to make a decision now. So, do I use this as a double page spread or as a single page spread? And these are the stamps that I'm going to use. This beautiful intricate butterfly stamp with a matching flower cluster. And this is from a set that's just been released from Apple Blossom and I'll put a link below as usual. But as these are clear stamps, it really helps because you can then use them to just visualize how your page is going to look. And I decide that I'll go with the single page design. So the next thing is stamping. And as this is really quite a textured surface, I really don't trust myself to get a good imprint if I stamp this by hand, so I'm actually going to use the Misty to do this. The great thing about the Misty is that I can just stamp, and if I get a bad impression, I can stamp again. So as long as the page doesn't move within the tool, then I can just keep on re-stamping until I get the perfect impression, which is just what you need when you've got a surface like this gesso surface. So I'm just taking a little bit of time to make sure that I've got my page set up in such a way that it won't shift or move when I do the stamping. And just as I expected, that first stamping was a little bit bitty, so I'll just re-ink my stamp and stamp again. So two stampings seem to have done the trick. You can't quite see it here, but you'll see in the close-up that it's made a really nice image. So I can remove my journal page now, and I've still got a little bit of ink on that stamp. So I'm going to stamp it out onto some spare paper because I want to make a mask next. Now this time when I stamp, I'm actually going to stamp by hand. 
So I'm covering my butterfly image with my butterfly mask and stamping that flower cluster over the top. But I want the flower clusters to look very much as if they're in the background. So it won't matter if they look faded. So having that gesso texture interfering with how well something stamps is actually a good thing here and you can use it in your favour. So I'm quickly going to make another mask and this time it's the flower cluster because I want to stamp over the top of both of those flower clusters just to make that image look a little bit bigger. Before I just make sure that the ink is dry using the heat tool and moving on to colouring those images. So it's back out with the reinkers, and I've put them on a palette this time and I'm picking them up with a water brush and just loosely colouring in the flowers in the background and the butterfly and you can see that I'm not being overly precise about this. This is the kind of colouring that anybody who doesn't like staying within the lines is going to love. So I want the flower cluster to be lifted just off of that background colour but I want it to be faded when compared with the butterfly and you'll see I've got a couple of tricks for getting that look and you'll see those in a minute. butterfly to be nice and bright so it really pops off the page and I'm going to do a little bit of colour mixing on the tips of the wings so you can get that lovely yellow going into the teal making a green colour and it'll just be really pretty. So now I'm going to start making those floral clusters go into the background a little bit more so I'll just use a piece of kitchen towel to dab off any excess ink and subdue them just a little bit. Then I'm just going to go back to my gesso and use a tiny little bit just to knock that cluster back a little bit further. But I don't want the gesso to be too white because it will be just too stark. So I'm going to use some re-inker ink to tint it a little bit. Then I'll just use it to go around the edges of the butterfly rings, further make that butterfly just pop off of that background. And to further emphasise that butterfly, I'm just going to go back over the outline of it with a black marker pen. This also helps to go back over any of the gesso areas that I've accidentally put onto the line. Once I've done that, I'll put some extra line detail in with some circles. And the circle lines, as you'll see as I do it, they mirror the flower design and they also just bring the whole thing together, make it all look a bit more cohesive. So I like the way the focal image is now looking, it's kind of working, but you know what? I think the background is mi missing something now, so I'm going to add a little bit more colour with a brush to the background. And again, I'm just using the re ink that I've got on my palette. Okay, that's a lot better, but I still think we need something a little bit darker in tone around the edges just to harmonise with the really strong, bold black colour line that we've been using. So I've got my favourite All Surfaces pencil here and this reacts with water to give you a really lovely dark colour. 
Okay, I think we're there. So in the close up, you can see all that wonderful texture from the gesso and then the color and the stamping and the added pen detail. So it's quite fun to try out the re-inkers again in different ways, get some really good uses out of them. And I hope you found the tips on using them really helpful, plus some of the stamping tips as well. If you did, please do like my video and subscribe to see more. I bring out new videos about art and craft every week. I'm totally looking forward to seeing what you do with these stamps. So please do let me know and hook me up on social media as well and all my links are below. I shall catch you again on Sunday with a new video, but in the meantime, feel free to watch my other videos with lots and lots of art, craft, tips, tricks and techniques and inspiration as well. Happy creating guys and I'll see you next time.